Hey everybody, Brain Stuff. Have you ever heard a color or, you know, smelled a sound? If so, don't worry, you are not alone. Instead, you're part of a group I consider super powered. You have synesthesia. Or you've done some pretty heavy drugs. Maybe that's a different episode. Anyway, when people with synesthesia experience input from one sense, you know, blah, 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 it results in the experience of another sense. So if you are a synesthete like author Vladimir Nabokov, you would associate letters with colors. That's called grapheme color synesthesia. This grapheme color stuff is the most common type, but synesthesia can occur between just about any combination of senses or cognitive pathways, if we're using the fancy term, and not everyone will experience the same type of synesthesia the same way. So while that soft ah uh, sound might always seem fire engine red to one synesthete, it might be cobalt blue for others. Some people with this condition see music. They see music. I mean, that sounds kind of beautiful when you think about it, right? And there are less common types like lexical gustatory. People with this condition taste certain flavors, dishes, or entire meals based on a picture or a word or a sound. Uh, smells could have colors and shapes too. The list goes on. This is all fascinating, but how do people get it? How do people get synesthesia? Researchers are still working on that one, but they believe the condition tends to be inherited somewhat, or genetic. Uh, about 40% of synesthetes have a close relative with synesthesia, and most synesthetes recall having the condition for as long as they can remember. It might sound like people have made mnemonic connections with sounds and colors and so on, but research shows this is a genuine sensory phenomenon rather than some kind of memory exercise. Let's do examples. So, for example, if we drew the number five all over a piece of paper and we scattered it with a couple of twos and these twos sort of formed a triangle, most people would have a hard time seeing those twos. They'd have to look closely to search for those twos and then slowly construct a shape. However, a grapheme color synesthete can see this triangle almost immediately. Researchers think that synesthesia is a kind of cross-wiring in the brain. In grapheme color synesthetes, seeing a number stimulates your grapheme region and the area of your visual cortex that responds to color stimuli. Even cooler is that there might be actual anatomical differences in the brains of synesthetes, like uh, increased white matter and gray matter in the brain. There is, however, one bit of sad news for all the non-synesthetes out there. People can't just catch synesthesia, but hey, um, it's not like all synesthetes have a great time. You know, it could be uncomfortable seeing a number in the wrong color, and one lexical gustatory synesthete, who shall remain anonymous, said that if a certain name doesn't taste right to him, he has a hard time liking the person it's attached to. Kevin. And it's time to talk about drugs. Don't act like you didn't know this was coming. Uh, hallucinogens might be one way that synesthesia can be manufactured, for lack of a better word. Several drugs can produce vivid synesthesia in non-synesthetes, which might be a key to understanding the condition. One researcher has posited that in non-synesthetes, information in a multi-sensory area travels back easily to its single sense area, but in synesthetes, again, this gets mixed up along the way, the, the cross wires thing. Hallucinogens, it turns out, may temporarily alter the user's neurochemistry and confuse these existing connections. I mean, let's face it, it might be pretty amazing to go to a concert if you have visually associated synesthesia. Thank you for watching. Have you had this experience? Let us know in the comments. Toss a like my way. Uh, subscribe, and if you'd like to learn more brain stuff, check with us every week and visit our website, howstuffworks.com.